Welcome back to Dirty 20, guys. And uh, we're very lucky today to be interviewing uh, the man, the legend, an old friend of mine, Aurelian Leigny. Am I saying that right? Yeah, well, it's, uh, sure. <laughs> the answer <laughs> is no. <laughs> but uh, here we are. We're here to chat about um, the Courier Hall of Adventures. So, like... Did 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 this come to you like in a flash of lightning or was it like a slow build where you were like, oh, um, you know, this this part of, of the world, at least in Forgotten Realms, exists, but, you know, 5e hasn't gone anywhere near it. Um, did you what was the kind of inception of, of, of the book? Um, I don't want to say it was a slow burn, but it was mm. definitely not a flash. Okay. It's more throughout conversations, talking to people. So the it's a combination of things that brought me there. One was the popularization of uh, D&D in Korea. Yeah. Uh, two was the knowledge that the books in Korean would come. Yeah. Three, and that's something I actually talk in the introduction of uh, talk about in the introduction of the book is I've I spent a really long time in Korea. Now. I mean, really long time. It's over ten years. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it feels like a long, really long time for me because I've constantly moved before that. So Korea right. is the one place where I stayed the longest, right? So I experienced a lot of things in terms of uh, classes, courses, uh, discovery through making documentaries, uh, working with overseas company to do some research here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But all I could hear about Korea around the world was K-pop and K-drama. Mm -hmm. And... Because of my experience, I knew there was so much more than just that. So I was trying right. to think, I didn't want to make a book about Korea because there are millions of those. Mm -hmm. like there really are a lot of books and that was not where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But having a gaming book about Korea would be a way to kind of talk about all that cultural uh, assets that, I, that I've experienced and that I know about while integrating in something that i love which is D, &D right right so it's the combination of all this that really made me think oh that could be a good idea and also the idea of having a korean setting that can be played in korea when you play D, &D. right yeah, yeah. So, no i mean i i think it's fantastic it it really got me excited um to to, to get a hold of the book um okay so um you know why kickstarter the um the strength of Kickstarter, more than anything else, is the community. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a huge gaming community on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. So if you create a project that is professional, that looks interesting, yeah. that is a little bit different, and that is well presented, the chances of reaching your goal is pretty high, Okay, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, how how far you're gonna exceed? Then it's up to each project, right? But the reaching right. the the chance they're reaching the goal are pr is pretty high. So Kickstarter, I thought about a couple of other ones like Ulule, which is uh, very active in France. Okay. Uh, so I I, had, I thought that might be a good idea, but uh, and then Indiegogo as well. Mm -hmm. But then there was something else that I really wanted was well that I really kind of needed. Yeah. It was, I did not want to have a flexible deadline for the, for the pricing. It's either I make it or I don't, because I knew that get, making, uh, getting it done would cost a lot of money. So I wouldn't have been able to take whatever money I got and complete it with my own money. Right. That wouldn't gotcha. have been possible. So either I get what I need to make it happen or it just doesn't happen. Right. 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 It's where I was. Okay. Uh, did you do a lot of prep before you kind of, you know, started? I mean, was that, h how long was the kind of run up before the campaign got going? Uh, three months. Three months. That's, that's yeah. quite quick. Yeah, it was too short. Uh, it was short. I'm not going to okay. say it was too short. It was short because mm -hmm. by the time I was ready to go, Mm -hmm. uh, I, I actually worked with a, with a freelance uh, marketer who, who did a lot of the 
copy editing for the for the page and then contacted some people around like blogs and everything yeah so so yeah six four to six months would have been better okay but as a writer there's one thing i know is there's never a good time right there's never a perfect moment right there's no there's no good times there's only deadlines Right, right. <laughs> so there's a point. There's one thing that I discovered through research is that April is usually a good time for a Kickstarter. April and September. Okay. Hmm. Uh, had you done a Kickstarter before? Uh, yes, I did one with uh, with Daniel for the documentary. Said it. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, which I also backed. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're you always have our backs. <laughs> um. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about kind of once, you know, once the Kickstarter campaign is live, like, what's the experience? Are you like 24-7 monitoring it? Did you bring in other people to help you run the campaign while it was going? Or like, was it, how was it? So... I, so the, the the marketing guy helped me, Dean. I'm gonna because I felt very bad calling him the marketing guy. The marketing uh, guy, yeah. Yeah, Dean helped a lot contacting people or reviewing some something that I would publish during that time. But most I, I did most of the work, which mm -hmm. um, both for the book and for the Kickstarter, it was inevitable in the position that I was that I would do pretty much everything which i don't necessarily recommend right because yeah, yeah. Uh, but i i mean I, my background is writing mm -hmm. uh, that that's that's where i know i can get the job done yeah. but then there's so many other components that it's better to have people to divide the work but as most people in this industry there's no choice you have to do it by yourself yeah. but during the campaign it's all about communicating about uh, showing it you need to have milestones basically and the first milestone is the green bar it's mm -hmm. inevitable the green bar mm -hmm. effect you know of it right you probably talked about that with other people i, I haven't no i haven't i haven't oh, heard really? about it before yeah the green bar effect is that people will only be interested when they have so many projects and they go on kickstarter and flick around mm -hmm. they they look at it and they will only check out something that has a certain amount of green in the in the funding bar under right. that it just doesn't attract their attention interesting so usually you want to have this first quarter filled as yeah. quickly as possible okay so that it just attracts people attention so yeah. this is the bulk of the work is to get that done within the first few days and mm -hmm. that's why you start a few months in advance to advertise so that when people know that it's live or if they like it then they're gonna right away pledge something right 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 right, right. So that's um, that's the bulk of the early work, and then after that, it's just keep on communicating, do some advertising, maybe uh -huh. organize something. Some stuff that I did that are quite common these days is do some giveaway uh, events for okay. sharing sharing the event and stuff like this. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The campaign ends, and uh, that's when the real work begins i would imagine that's where you kind of have the pressure of okay these people are expecting this and i need to deliver it can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that uh mm. for me it worked in in two bits the first okay. bit was actually it was a release because when you make when you make a project like this, you bring it to the point where you can no longer do it without that extra money. Yeah. So once the money comes in, it's a release because you can finally get those things done, right? Right, 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 right. And the first step was okay. Now I can hire these people, these people, these people, and do the illustrations. I can do editing. Mm. I can do. And some of those steps ended up being a lot more clunky than I expected. Okay. Um, I, th this is a specific area where I don't want to go into too much detail, but the one of the step, I didn't get the response I needed from uh, the person who was supposed to do that. Right. So this kind of bumped things back. Right. A while. Yeah. To a point where I hit the second bit was 
oh, now I need to deliver and I'm nowhere near be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. that's when the, the pressure went. It's, it shoot up because this wasn't being done properly. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all, it, because it's on me, right? Right. Nobody's going to say, oh, maybe this guy didn't do his job properly or maybe right. this, this person has been a little bit late. They, nobody sees that. No. Yeah. So it's that, all on the, you. the first bit for, for this for me was definitely a big release in the beginning. Because mm -hmm. I needed this, I needed to, w and then yeah, it's a lot of pressure. Yeah. So the work, it's not that the work stops. It's more like all of a sudden you go from your timeline mm -hmm. to okay, I've got this left, but I still have that amount of work to do. Right, right, and right, that's right, right. that's where the pressure goes up. Interesting, interesting. Uh, looking back on it, looking back on uh, uh, the campaign, um, would you have done anything differently? Yes. Okay. Yes. The most important thing, it's not so much about the campaign, but about the content, actually. Okay. The most important thing when you write something like a book or uh, any written content that you want to kickstart, it has to be done. Like, mm -hmm. it, it really has to be done at the point where there's just a few tweaks to do. The money is just to get it printed and out there. Right. And that's what I thought I did. Except that uh, I needed the money to do the editing of the book, for instance. Okay. So over time, I think because I worked on this for three years, right? Yeah. Over over time, I did get some commissions from illustrators and everything. So I, I did put my own money in advance, but in illustration so that I could sell the products. Right, because it's important for people to be able to see, exactly. you know, what, what, what it's going to look like. But now after the experience I've had, I would have spent more of that money in editing in advance and mm -hmm. less in illustration. Okay. Because if the editing had been done by the point I launched the Kickstarter, it would have been a lot, a lot smoother. Like things that would have been entirely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's more money allocation that I would be doing differently. Any advice that you might give to someone who uh, is considering crowdfunding? So, so the advice is simple, make a good product, um, do prepare in advance mm -hmm. and, and do make sure that, do make sure you present it professionally. That's the okay. most important because there's a lot of people out there who slap something together and hope to, to make some money and then worry, oh, but why I did, I, I wrote something good and everything. Well, but you also have to sell it, right? Right. So make it end, which is where I said I would do it differently. But at the same time, I was kind of partially right in what I did. Mm -hmm. Have nice illustrations. Right. That, that helps a lot. Yeah, yeah, that helps to sell the product for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so those are the basics. And probably if you can build your team in advance. I think I could have uh, gone around with the editing simply by finding a way to make an agreement with an editor in advance. Do you mind me asking, how much did you end up raising? 50, uh, uh, 47,000 euros. So okay. roughly 50,000 something USD. Okay. Not bad at all. No, no, no. It did really good. Like, I'm, ver I'm very happy. Um, there was some of the stretch goals yeah. that went beyond $100,000 that yeah. I, was, I was really hoping that I could get to. Yeah, yeah. Because those, one of them was uh, adventure music, oh, okay, perf performed by Korean traditional bands. Yeah, and I really, really wanted to do that. I think it was hundred and one hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars stretch. That goal. would have been so cool. <laughs> that would have been because there's some really, really good traditional music here that can be fusioned into something very exciting. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, I love the Gayagam and. Uh, you know, um, stuff like that. Did you ever consider miniatures as, as a stretch yeah. goal? Uh, not as a stretch goal, but okay. maybe down the line, yeah. Oh, very cool. I will it, keep it's my a, eyes it's a on different, that. <laughs> it's a different ball game, right? Because yeah. if I go miniature, it's not like I can 3D print them. It's not good enough quality. Mm -hmm. The resin printers are still too dangerous to keep using at home yeah so it means i have to print them in a in a workshop or something yeah 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 that means a thousand or two thousand pieces it's like 
not not yet but if the book does well and then i've got a bunch of ideas for the for following up um if those go well minis probably will be in the in the future too count me in i am a sucker <laughs> for plastic crack yeah well we all are <laughs> okay um so i mean i've gotten through all my questions um is there anything else that you would like to to mention um well i think that's pretty much it for me the 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 order for the printer is not through yet okay so for uh, for uh, anyone who wants to get a copy of the book at the price that it is right now I'm still taking late uh, pledges on my site at www.koreaRPG.com. Excellent. I'll put a link so, in the description. Cool. So anyone who, uh, who wants... Because after that, I'm going to move to print on demand. Okay. And then, because, because I don't have the, play, the, the space yeah, to yeah, of keep course. stocks or anything. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. that might be more expensive later. So right now, it's still at the Kickstarter price wicked but uh, yeah well then that keep an eye out uh, i'm i'm planning to do a bunch of things related to that universe so hopefully people are interested oh i y you know i am over the moon like i'm i'm super excited for it uh i managed while i was working at the shop which is when you were doing the kickstarter i uh had a lot of D, &D uh players that i played with and uh yeah i talked a few of them into backing as well so nice. you know you have fans in the uk who are looking forward to it you <laughs> <laughs> all right man well uh Orian, thank you so much for giving us your time um you know to the people in dirty 20 land uh check out uh aurelian's uh website there'll be a link in the description and uh thanks for watching and keep slaying <laughs>